Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. Before I get into this tutorial, I did want to go ahead and share my website with you. It is coreyfrankcreates.com. That's basically my landing page for all the different things I offer as an artist, particularly my art shop on Redbubble, which includes products, all different kinds of products from like mugs and mouse pads, stickers, uh, all the way to more traditional art prints and framed art prints. So uh, quite a bit of my work is on there. I would love it if you go and check it out. Again, my website is coreyfrankcreates.com. All right, so today's video is a landscape painting and I typically don't do landscape paintings. It's normally like animals, people, certain flowers that I'll do. So it's kind of fun to do something a little different. I'm going to talk about my process, give it a short little tutorial. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So I started with a flat brush and just put water down on the page, a nice layer of water so that when I put the paint over it, see how the edges just flow really nicely. And this creates the sort of hazy effect in the background. So I am using uh, ultramarine blue in the top and then uh, kind of down at the bottom there, you see some, um, uh, sorry, not ultramarine blue at the top. That was down at the bottom, I misspoke. So um, I think it's manganese blue up at the top, also a little bit of cobalt blue and then uh, cadmium red medium and cadmium red light. And then I'm just mixing wet into wet right on the paper rather than pre-mixing my colors. So that purple is a litzer and crimson and ultramarine blue. And then I kind of used, I uh, dried the brush a little bit and made it, cleaned it and dried it a little bit and then um, kind of made that circle in the middle for the sun and then filled it back in with some color. and. Admittedly, this paper is not heavy enough to do as much water application as I'm doing. I would actually need more. So this is a 140 pound paper. What I really should be using is a 300 pound paper. Um, so you may see a little bit of the surface of the paper where I add many layers of water kind of degrading a little bit and, and starting to get little almost like lint pieces, pieces of the paper coming off the surface. So ideally, if you do something like this, where you're using lots of layers of water, just go ahead and get a 300 pound paper. It's more expensive, but it's gonna be worth it because it's gonna look that much nicer and your paper won't crump crumple like it is in mine. So I kind of took this in 10 minute chunks and between each painting time, I let the paper completely dry before I added any layers over the top. So like here where you see me adding more of the, I added I think some alizarin crimson over the uh, cadmium red and then completely let that dry and each successive layer I, I let the paper completely dry so there was absolutely no moisture left. It was, it was as dry as could be. And then you can put more water and uh, paint over the top and for the most part your layers underneath won't bleed into each other. So it's really important with landscapes when you, or any painting when you have uh, layers that you're building up you want to make sure that the ones underneath are completely dry before you add on the top because otherwise they'll start bleeding into each other and get a little too muddy of a color. So that dark color to the bottom left, it's a kind of combination of Payne's Gray, Ultramarine Blue. I think I did put a little bit of the Manganese Blue in there as well. And then a lot of that Illusion Crimson for this sort of pinky purpley effect. And each time when I put a layer, some of the watercolor edges get they kind of create a little sharp edge. That's just the nature of watercolor. So I go in with a clean, damp brush a lot of the time it's that large flat brush I'm currently using, and smooth out the edges. But the different brushes I used in this painting are this uh, large flat, it's a like wash brush where you can apply thick washes, and then my size six round brush, uh, which is a good soft, it has really soft bristles, so it just blends really easily. And then I did wind up using later on for the little grains of wheat and also for smoothing some of the edges when I needed smaller areas, I used my slanted flat brush, which comes to a nice fine point at the highest angle. There you see I'm really building up the layer to get a richer color, especially where that red 
from the sunset is. And then lightening up the top of the sun. And again, you can see some of that <laughs> poor paper surface peeling up. There's that slanted flash br flat brush I was talking about earlier where I smooth out some of those hard edges that the watercolor created. Ideally, you know, if you could just keep the paper wet and have all of your uh, smooth parts just bleed into each other, but each time you add a layer, and if you don't add layer over the entire surface of the paper where the edges of the water are, that's where you're gonna get a hard edge of, of paint. So you just wanna smooth that out once it's dry. just trying to darken those bottom areas which are darker and shadowed uh, like they are in the reference image and if you want to see that reference image it's linked in the description it's from unsplash.com there are copyright free photographs on there by really wonderful photographers so go ahead and take a look at the description if you want to see what that original image looks like That color of the sun is the cadmium yellow medium, kind of at the uh, as the base layer, and then cadmium red light, uh, more towards that bottom. It's it's an orangey yellow, so I mixed those two together uh, with using wet to wet. I didn't pre-mix them on my palette. I just mixed them right on the paper. Okay, so here I went ahead and laid down a little bit of water and mixed up this kind of almost eggplant purple type color so that these are the background pieces of wheat that are kind of blurred because they're further away from the camera. And so that color, I used some sepia paint, not paint, yeah, paints gray, sorry. <laughs> sepia paints gray, ultramarine blue, and some alizarin crimson made it really nice and dark. And what's so lovely about that wet and wet technique is as long as the water's not too wet, when you lay it down, kind of just a layer of clean water and then put um, really dark paint over it, the edges just bleed out and, and automatically create a blurred effect. Smoothing out those edges again. Now here is where I'm going in. The background is completely dry. And now I'm going in with very thick paint and drawing those very dark silhouettes using that same eggplant color so that these are the silhouettes of the wheat right in the foreground. So you can see them very easily and they're nice and dark from with that sunset. Uh, there's uh, much more sharp edges. And I am using that slanted flat brush so the tip comes to a fairly decent point. And that's what I'm using to create the details and just kind of using the bristles to create the straw-like effect that's at the tip of, of, this, of the stalks of wheat or grain, I don't know if it's wheat, it's some type of grain, I'm assuming. Some of these stalks were very, very uh, dark at, at the kind of tips of them, so I did go back over with just some black paint, as you can see me doing right here. And then the stems became just kind of a little more blurred as they went down towards the ground so I made them lighter and then kind of blurred the edges by adding a little bit of water over the top and then this last stock that I'm working on was just slightly blurred on the edges so I didn't want to do a full wet into wet technique with the plain water and then going over the top because it would have blurred the edges too much so I started painting it first and then just lightly went over the edges with a little bit of water to kind of soften them out. And then I added a signature to finish it off, and that is the final piece.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless, and I'll see you soon.